Hi, it's Allison here coming to you from my studio in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It's still extremely smoky outside, so I'm just immersing myself in my passion. I'm in my cozy little art studio with the windows closed and hopefully the lighting is not too reddish orange. I've had to stop my photography. I usually do photography weekly to put my art into print and uh, just the lighting hasn't been very good. So I am going to show you what I've been working on because I'm so, so excited. This is a draft project. This is called an Oracle deck. Really all an Oracle deck is, the way I'm using it, is a deck of, right now this is wallpaper labels, but it's going to be a deck of cards. Very similar to this beautiful deck made by Kathy Nichols Art. This is her synchronicity deck where every card has a beautiful piece of her art and words and a story. She has a little guidebook that's attached. And I have her other one here, which I really, really love. I bought this one a long time ago. This is called a Flower Medicine Oracle Deck. And I just love botanicals. I love flowers. And I had purchased this because I thought, what a cool way to be inspired, you know, in the evening, just sitting down and pulling a card out of the deck. She has all the color meanings here, which is really neat. Not all decks come with this story. They don't come with a guidebook or meanings necessarily, but some do. So this would be an example of her card, Wildflower Freedom. And these are just beautiful. I really love them. And they inspired me to take a couple courses on how to create your own Oracle deck. So I've been taking, I took Kathy Nichols class. She offers a wonderful class on creating these decks. I also am taking Elena Hennessy, who's amazing, and it's a very intensive course. I'm almost finished. And I also took one on Skillshare, and it's been really, really neat just seeing what different artists think about um, the process of an Oracle deck and how they all teach it very differently. But there's so many learnings in each of their courses. And all an oracle deck is, in my mind, the way I'm using it, is a deck of artwork that I love, that resonates with me, that speaks to me. So for me, it would be considered what I call my art poetry paintings. There is a certain style of my work that I have put together in this deck. Now there's 100 wallpaper labels in here, but I am going to publish this deck into more of a beautiful card format. I'm thinking probably this size and with the gold edging and I would use it as a way to reflect on my day, to, to reflect on a situation that might be going on in my life. I love the idea of sharing color and joy through art. So if my art happens to resonate with somebody else, you know, if they're going through something in their life or if they just want inspiration, inspirational artist prompts. I love the idea of being able to purchase a little deck of artworks and just pulling one out and reading the words. For instance, this one saying weather the storm. And what I'm going to do is write a guidebook that goes with each of these cards. So I have narrowed it down from probably 140 paintings. In this deck, again, there's a hundred, and I'm going to probably narrow it down to even more. I, I've decided I'd like to make multiple decks. And But back to what an oracle deck is, some people have heard of a tarot card deck, so this is a little bit different, but similar concept. The way I'm using it, again, is for reflection. I have a nursing background. I worked as an RN for over 20 years here in Calgary, and we are taught to reflect on our practice all the time. It's highly encouraged. And when you're in a profession, you know, most professions, you know, there's just so much uh, involvement with emotions and uh, going through situations. And it really doesn't matter what your profession. Uh, I just bring up nursing because that's a practice where they really, you know, we did a whole course on reflection and I used to be graded on my reflective writing. But this is different. For me, I'm very visual. I have become an artist and art is my life. I absolutely love it. And I love the idea of being able to pull one of my own pieces and sort of meditate on it, reflect on it. I call my work intuitive. 
I don't really feel that it's strongly intuitive, but it's intuitive in the way I put it together. I always have sort of an idea of the composition or the style, but it's still within an intuitive way that I put down the colors and the marks. And the longer I paint, the harder it is to stay intuitive because I get in this rhythm where I just paint my own style all the time. I mean, I just, it's, it's what I love and it's sort of what's come out of me. I'm sort of sidetracking, but this draft deck, I again, hope to edit it down, write the guidebook and I cannot wait to kind of get it out and publish it. This particular one is something I need to remind, remind myself of all the time. Keep it simple. This is a very simple, simple watercolor piece that I had done with some mixed media elements. Um, and actually, I just want to give a quick shout out to Art Magic YYC as he made all of these this draft wallpaper deck for me and he does all of my fine art prints on canvas and gicle and almost all of these little works are available in print we're just sort of getting our website up to date so that's just uh, one thing i wanted to say is just thanks so much to ken for doing this for me he's an amazing printer and it's just one person uh, that runs art magic i also wanted to talk about the purpose of this so not only is it for reflections but it's also for artist prompts and so if you're a creative and for some reason my art speaks to you and you love the idea of like a handheld deck i have a lot of my popular works in this deck and not only is it an insight on you know something going on in your life you can pull a card at the end of your day or after you know, midday, maybe um, after a busy morning at work, you could pull a card on your lunch break. And when you read it, um, I almost want the creative person who is using this deck to think of it as an artist prompt as well as a prompt for life. So as an example, well, I suppose this one came up, so keep it fresh. If this comes up, it's sort of like, okay, whatever's going on in your life, uh, do you need to do something just to further along, whether it's education or update yourself somehow, um, you know, learn about something new. When you think of this as an artist prompt for say a beginner artist or someone who's stuck in their work, maybe you've been an artist for a long time, keep it fresh is, you know, that reminder to constantly consider reinventing yourself as an artist. We we need to grow as artists, otherwise we get very, you know, kind of pigeonholed, we get stuck in our work. I do not believe that an artist just needs to have one style. I believe we can have many different styles and it just takes that hard work and dedication and practice, just showing up and doing the work. Keeping it fresh is so important if you are selling your work and two, just to keep yourself mentally stimulated, not doing the same thing every time. and making those brave mo moves on the canvas or on a piece of paper and something that you feel, oh, this may not turn out, but just doing it anyways and taking that risk and keeping it fresh. That's an example of one of these cards. I also wanted to talk about these cards as when I title my paintings, there's a lot of meaning behind the title. The titles are very much reflective of my relationship with my creative practice. This particular painting is one of my favorites. That's why I may have it on sort of the cover of the book if I choose to publish uh, this deck in this format. This is called And There You'll Be. And I think about this painting and there you'll be, there's so much more meaning, but just to kind of narrow it down in terms of my meaning creatively, and there you'll be refers to my creative um, drive or creativity being there for me at a time when I needed it most and it finding me and knowing it's always there. The more we create, the more our inspiration keeps coming and it keeps flowing and the more we want to create. So this painting and there you'll be, it also makes me think of, you know, someone in your life that they'll just always be there no matter if they're here physically or not 
this painting has a lot of emotion attached to it and it was a really intuitive painting it just kind of came out one one night when I was painting it and I won't get too much go into too many more details but it's all about how the title made me think of some words to go with the particular piece and as you can see in some of these artworks this one says there are brighter days ahead you know I've titled it art poetry because sometimes I add words but to me it's a very poetic composition it's very poetic with the colors and the marks and I think of it as art poetry this one's saying allow for abundance so just different prompts again for like what's going on in your life and also artist prompts you know uh you know, for this one, channel your muse, you know, who are your role models? Who are those influences, those people that you hang out with mostly? You know, they say we're most alike the, you know, the two or three closest people we hang out with all the time. Uh, channel your role model, channel your muse. This particular painting was one, again, that just kind of came out and it reminds me so much of my mother. So I do think of my mother when I paint. I, Mom, if you're watching this <laughs> or if you're listening to this, um, she's a huge role model, a huge inspiration. And uh, yeah, and I'm just going to uh, move on from here. But this gives you an idea of these. This is just a draft oracle deck of 100 cards. I hope to narrow them down. I'm so excited about them. I can't remember if I talked about how beneficial wallpaper labels are. This is a label that I had at a restaurant, so it shows my work. It shows the price. This was a canvas print that I'd embellished, how much I charge for it, and then how to find me on these QR codes. And businesses love this because you can just peel it off and reuse these labels and it doesn't take the paint off the walls or the wood finish. Um, I can't remember if I'd mentioned that, but I just wanted to, uh, again, give a shout out to Art Magic for discovering that. That's pretty cool. And all of these little artworks did come from my artworks. This is an example of one that I just had uh, that just went in to be properly scanned and photographed. And when it was scanned and photographed, I got this canvas proof. So it just shows the resolution, how it comes out. This is how it would come out in a high quality art print. And I really love the colors. Uh, this shows, again, those details because I really wanted to show the details of my work. That's a little bit about the print process. I designed these cards. I did another video on this earlier, but because I've made progress with my deck, I just wanted to show you all this and how easy a deck is to create, especially if you're a fairly prolific artist or if you want to be prolific, if you just love creating. Again, I took these watercolor cards. I made these cards from uh, a very affordable watercolor paper and I initially had folded into a card format as to possibly reuse them and I, I did tear them off because when I was photographing these I do my own photography actually when I was doing my photography when it's in a card format it was harder to hold flat on my easel and you really want your work to be flat when you're doing photography so I'm kind of getting into something totally different but that's just what I do <laughs> Uh, these are little bases that I haven't finished yet. This is when I'm almost done. But the Oracle deck pieces originated out of all of my favorite artworks I've made over the last three to four years. And also I'm creating some that I thought would be cool just for the purpose of the Oracle deck. And what I did is just in pencil, I'd written down things that made me think of these colors. Um, what words come to my mind when I see this type of card? And as an example, I have on here, mysterious. Purple can be a very mysterious color. It can be one associated with royalty. I believe it was a very expensive pigment to make years and years ago. I think of embrace, I think of rest, and I think of dark and light and rhythm and acceptance. Uh, conduit of light, I think of just the way I have these yellows. Yellow is a very joyful color. Um, so that's just an example of a painting I've started and I hope to finish. I uh, I have a variety of colors in my work. This one I started to add collage. That was from a sewing pattern, one of my mom's old 
sewing uh, patterns. I think they're called Simplicity. I really love the base of this one. I look forward to finishing it. And just playing around with, this is just collage, one of those Japanese papers. And I'm gonna just do some something over top. I may or may not use that. You wanna make sure your images, of course, are everything's royalty free. This one, I have some Japanese papers and I started to do watercolor rounds. So those are just the bases. I hope to do a video where we can finish some of these together. Uh, I just really want to show you how I've been working lately and how I've been working small. I love the idea of, again, cutting up old paintings and, you know, if I get a new art supply, working over top and, you know, it's a challenge for me to work small. So this has been a really fun practice. I'm used to working quite large and working small, I find, takes me just as much time or maybe even longer. I, I love the idea though of repurposing old works that I know I will not go back to otherwise and create in a full painting format. So these were works that were very much practice works that I had cut up. When I looked at my work, I could see this little window of an area I absolutely loved, the turquoise and the oranges. It just made me so happy and, you know, the whole painting didn't bring me joy, but this little part brought me enough joy that I want to go back and create over top of it. And same with all these little pieces. Um, I don't know if it's typical for an artist to have trouble throwing things out. I do have trouble throwing things out because I really like them to all have a purpose and a use. And <laughs> this is probably part of my mental health, um, what do you say, status with, with reusing things. But I recently sold a painting. I'm just going to show you all. It's all packaged up and ready to go. I'm just going to lift up my camera ever so slightly without making you too dizzy. And this particular painting, again, it was an art poetry painting, Stay Present in Each Moment. And I had written this sweet little card by taking one of these old paintings that was cut up and kind of fit the color palette in in this painting and I made this little card you know it was again a really smoky day here and I had cabin fever and I really just wanted to do something a little bit extra for the person that had purchased this painting and so yeah that's just an example of how you can use these and repurpose them. I'm gonna finish up now but do stay tuned because I just can't wait to show you this oracle deck, this art poetry deck. There's the piece actually we were just looking at. Can't wait to show this to you when it's ready to be published. So thank you all for tuning in and I hope you got some inspiration from this video and I love comments so feel free to comment whether it's constructive criticism or just how I inspired you. I just love it. It encourages me and I want to keep creating really great videos. So thanks for all of your feedback. Okay, take care.